One of the many fascinating areas of scientific research is how humans evolved to be the way we are today. When all life forms evolved from single-celled organisms, how is it that we came to be standing on two feet, using advanced tools and creating technology advanced enough for me to be able to actually shoot this video? One of the key moments in human evolution is considered to be the point when our ancestors went from walking on four limbs to two feet, because this allowed us to explore new environments and move over long distances while conserving energy. Now, by digitally reconstructing the muscles on the fossils of a famous human ancestor known as Lucy, researchers suggest that the species had powerful muscles enough for them to stand erect. This, in this episode, I tell you all about Lucy, why researchers think that she walked on two legs, and why it is important in reconstructing the story about our own evolution. I am Mohana Basu, and this is Pure Science. Lucy, known as AL2881, is the nickname given to a fossilized skeleton of a female hominin of the species Australopithecus afarensis. Lucy is one of the most famous and significant discoveries in the field of paleoanthropology. The skeleton was discovered in 1974 in the Afar region of Ethiopia. Lucy's remains are estimated to be about 3.2 million years old. This species was an early human species that lived in East Africa over 3 million years ago. Shorter than us, with an ape-like face and smaller brain, but able to walk on two legs, it adapted to both tree and savanna dwelling, helping the species survive for almost a million years. Named for the Beatles classic Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, Lucy is one of the most complete examples to be unearthed of any type of Australopithecus, with 40% of her skeleton recovered. Lucy's significance lies in the fact that she provided crucial insights into the early stages of human evolution. Her skeletal structure revealed a combination of human-like and ape-like characteristics. Lucy's species is believed to be a direct ancestor or a close relative of the genus Homo, which includes modern humans. The discovery of Lucy helped shape our understanding of bipedalism and the evolutionary transitions that occurred as our early ancestors started walking upright. The remarkably preserved skeleton of Lucy provided valuable evidence that early hominins were capable of bipedal locomotion, despite having some ape-like features. Lucy's discovery also contributed to our understanding of early human behavior, anatomy, and the ecological context in which our ancestors lived. The study of Lucy and other Australopithecus afarensis fossils has had a significant impact on our knowledge of human evolution and continues to be an important subject of research and exploration in the field of paleoanthropology. Further advancing on this knowledge, Ashley Weissman, a researcher at the Cambridge University, created a digital 3D model of the leg and pelvis muscles of Lucy. Now, this research is another excellent example that shows how making scientific data available publicly can lead to significant advances in our knowledge. Weissman was able to use a recently published open source data on the Lucy fossil to create a digital model of her lower body muscle structure. The study is published in the journal Royal Society Open Science, the link to which you can find in the description below. Digital modeling suggests that the fossil had powerful leg and pelvic muscles suited to tree dwelling, but knee muscles that allowed fully erect walking. The research recreated 36 muscles in each leg, most of which were much larger in Lucy and occupied greater space in the legs compared to modern humans. For example, major muscles in Lucy's calves and thighs were over twice the size of those in modern humans, as we have a much higher fat to muscle ratio. Muscles made up 74% of the total mass in Lucy's thigh compared to just 50% in humans. Many paleoanthropologists agree that Lucy was bipedal, but disagree on how she walked. 
Some have argued that she moved in a crouching waddle similar to chimpanzees, also our common ancestor, when they walk on two legs. Others believe that her movement was closer to our own upright bipedalism. Research in the last 20 years has seen a consensus begin to emerge for fully erect walking and Wiseman's work adds further weight to this. Lucy's knee extensor muscles and the leverage they would allow confirm an ability to straighten the knee joints as much as a healthy person can today. Lucy's ability to walk upright can only be known by reconstructing the path and space that a muscle occupies within the body. Although we are now the only animal on this planet that can stand upright with straight knees, Lucy's muscles suggest that she was just as proficient at bipedalism as we are today, while possibly also being at home in the trees. According to Weissman, Lucy likely walked and moved in a way that we do not see in any li living species today. The species would have roamed eras of open wooded grassland as well as more dense forests in East Africa around 3 to 4 million years ago. These reconstructions of Lucy's muscles suggest that she would have been able to exploit both habitats effectively. Lucy was a young adult who stood at just over 1 meter tall and probably weighed around 28 kgs. Lucy's brain would have been roughly a third of the size of our own. To recreate the muscles of this hominin, Weissman started with some living humans, using MRI and CT scans of the muscle and bone structures of a modern woman and man, she was able to map the muscle parts and build a digital musculoskeletal model. Weissman then used existing virtual models of Lucy's skeleton to re-articulate the joints, that is to put the skeleton back together. This work defined the axis from which each joint was able to move and rotate, replicating how they move during life. Finally, muscles were layered on top based on pathways from modern humans, muscle maps, as well as little traces of muscle connections that were detectable on the fossilized bones. These reconstructions can now help scientists better understand how this human ancestor walked. Muscle reconstructions have already been used to gauge running speeds of a T-Rex, for example. By applying similar techniques to ancestral humans, the team wants to reveal the spectrum of physical movement that propelled our evolution, including those capabilities that we may have lost now. Once again, this is Mohana Basu, assistant editor at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.